Well, this is it, folks. The night we have all been waiting for. It is, without a doubt, the most prestigious night of the year on the literary calendar. It's killer time. Margaret Atwood happens to be in the audience, what do I do? Never look her in the eye. Why? She will knock you down. Tonight, five Canadian authors compete for the richest prize in Canadian literature. $100,000 from our dedicated sponsor, Scotiabank. Yeah. It's the very best thing can happen to a writer because the jury is your peers. It's been the greatest privilege uh, to, to get to know my fellow nominees and to be shortlisted with such brilliant writers. It's not about celebrities, it's not about fame, it's not about bestsellers, it's just about books. But I always think when I finish the book that I'm never going to write another novel anyway. Writing fiction is, it's almost like professional voyeurism. Anybody who writes a book of any kind is essentially an optimist because, first of all, um, they're assuming they'll finish the book, and they're assuming someone will then read the book. <laughs> the impact of the Giller is undeniable. Since 1994, this award has generated a phenomenal $60 million in book sales. You have no idea how special this is for me. Thank God for people like Jack Rabinovich who put it up front where it belongs. Has there ever been a better time to get lost in a good book? Thank you, thank you, thank you. It is by far the greatest honor of my career. I'm deeply grateful to everybody at Scotiabank and the Giller Prize for making this happen. In the immortal words of my dad, I know you've all been waiting for this. For the price of uh, dinner for two in this town, you can buy all the books. So uh, eat at home and read the books. Have you ever just given away $100,000? Only to Revenue Canada, so this will be a lot. And the winner of the Scotiabank Giller Prize is... Live from the Jack Rabinovich Reading Room in the Toronto Reference Library, we are proud to present the 2022 Scotiabank Giller Prize shortlist. Now, please welcome our host, author and broadcaster, J.L. Richardson. Ah, good morning, good afternoon in some places in the country. Um, hello, everyone. I am thrilled to be here with you today in this beautiful, the Jack Rabinovich Reading Room, which is a tribute to the Giller Prize founder, Jack Rabinovich. Uh, we're surrounded by everything and everyone that Jack truly loved. And for those of you watching virtually, this is a room filled with books and bookcases, um, a beautiful celebration of literature, but also pictures of the family, um, and just a great reminder of why we're here. Um, I know we're really excited to be here today and we're prepared to announce this year's Scotiabank Giller Prize finalists. But before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that the Toronto Public Library is situated on Indigenous land and dish with one spoon territory. This is the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Wendat, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Toronto Public Library gratefully acknowledges these Indigenous nations for their guardianship of this land. And I think especially as we move towards this Truth and Reconciliation Day, it's important to remember the stories that took place here, that were taken, and that were twisted, so that as we move forward, we can move forward in a better way, a way that's grounded in truth with the hope of reconciliation. The short list was selected by an esteemed five-member jury featuring award-winning Canadian authors Kai Kello and Wabgesheg Rice, as well as jury chair Casey Plett. It also features American authors Katie Kitamura and Scott Spencer. So they received 138 submissions. And over the last few months, that's what they've done. They've reviewed 138 submissions. And the jury has narrowed it down to this group of five incredible works that make up the shortlist. 
We're so excited to have four members of the jury here today, Kai Kello, Casey Platt, Wabgishig Rice, and Katie Kinamura. But before, of course, there's always a teaser, right? Before we get to the actual list, uh, and let me tell you, it's a good one. Uh, before we get to it, I want to welcome Executive Director of the Scotiabank Giller Prize, Alana Rabinovich. Thank you, Jail. So good to be back. So good to see you. So good to see a full room uh, in real life, in the flesh. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm really happy to be a small part of sharing this news with you today, so I won't talk long so we can get to the real deal. We announced our long list <clears throat> in early September in St. John's, Newfoundland. After months of reading, Zoom calls, deliberations, and emails, the jury arrived at that list of 14. The jurors themselves are five superb writers who made time to read close to 140 books, no small feat. I thank them for their dedication, their mindfulness, and their service. After today, we begin a seven-city national and international tour to bring the finalists across Canada and into the US. We have different hosts in every city and look forward to fantastic conversations amidst crowds of book lovers at every stop. The finalists will be celebrated on November 7th in Toronto at a gala ceremony televised nationally by CBC. As our broadcast partner, CBC continues to do an outstanding job promoting the creative and literary arts on its multitude of platforms. A proper shout out to our primary and lead sponsor, Scotiabank. They've been absolutely essential in our efforts to bring Canadian fiction to a broader audience. I'd also like to thank the Toronto Public Library for hosting this event. It's a pleasure and privilege to launch Giller's season at the Jack Rabinovich Reading Room, a space created in my father's honor. Our other sponsors to whom we are very grateful are Audible, the world's leading audiobook company, Indigo, Canada's largest book chain, and our official media sponsor, The Globe and Mail. I'd also like to thank Kobo Canada for generously donating their Sage e-readers to the jury to help them in their reading journey. With that, I'd like to welcome to the stage Mike Tuzevsky, Scotiabank Vice President, Global Sponsorships and Event Marketing. Thank you, Alana. Um, great to see you and everyone else in this room. It feels great to be in person again. Um, you know, we've gone through a lot these past couple of years, and these types of events bring people together, and which is very exciting for us as an organization. Um, I'm excited to be here to announce the 2022 Scotia Giller Prize shortlist. Um, a sincere thank you to the Toronto Reference Library for hosting us today. Can't th thank for a better place to host a literary achievement such as this. Um, at Scotiabank, we're proud of the long-standing partnership with the Rabinovich family. Thank you for your support and partnership. We look at it as a great partnership moving forward. Um, in many ways, the last two years have taught us several lessons. It forced many of us to slow down, uh, to prioritize, to put health and wellness above anything else. And for many of us, we found solace between the pages of a good book. I believe writers have a unique way of driving our imagination and showcasing different perspectives through narrative which is why I'm so proud to represent Scotiabank here today to celebrate Canada's literary talent. At Scotiabank, we have a long history of supporting communities where we live and work. Our support of Scotiabank Giller Prize is one way we help raise and advance the profile of Canadian top storytellers, both at home and around the world. For the 14 authors named the 2022 long list early this month, Congratulations, a massive feat. Chosen from over 130 submissions, you represent the best of Canada's 2022 fiction, a huge achievement to be proud of. And to the author soon to be named the 2022 shortlist, I encourage you to enjoy the weeks ahead, including the Beat Between the Pages tour, the gala night, and sharing this experience with your loved ones and, of course, your readers. Why we truly hope it is a memorable experience for you and for book enthusiasts across the country. Thank you again for having Scotiabank and me here today. It's fantastic to be back celebrating Scotiabank Giller Prize with all of you. Now it's my pleasure to turn it over to JL 
for the big announcement. Hello, everyone. I am going to introduce somebody else that has a big announcement. I, I, don't, come, I don't come to this event with any announcements. I'm just here to like point you at the next person. Um, but thank you, Mike. I found a fellow football fan. It's rare at these literary events to find one, so I appreciate that. Um, but I would like to introduce you to the executive director of Unscripted Content, CBC, and our host broadcaster, Jennifer Detman. Sorry, it's a bit of a lunch bag letdown. You thought the announcement was coming next. No. I don't know about you, but uh, it doesn't truly feel like fall until the shortlist is announced. You sort of start to see the trees turn color and it gets cooler, and then we get the, uh, the shortlist, which is perfectly timed for some fireside reading. Nicely done, Alana. I'm thrilled to be here on behalf of the CBC to share in the love and appreciation for Canadian fiction and for the Scotiabank Giller Prize. We're fortunate to have so many talented writers in this country, and throughout the year at the CBC, we look for ways to shine a light on their incredible work, whether it's CBC Books, CBC Radio's The Next Chapter and Writers and Company, or our annual National Book Debate Canada Reads. We also bring acclaimed uh, Canadian stories from the page to the screen in our series and feature film adaptations. Look out for a new series we've got coming. Um, it's called Essex County, and it's based on Jeff Lemire's award-winning graphic novel, novel coming to CBC and CBC Gem early next year. And I'm sure you all remember the adaptation we did of Margaret Atwood's alias Grace, itself a Giller Prize winner. Canadian actress, Sarah Gadden gave an award-winning lead performance as suspected murderer Grace Marks. Well, fast forward to today, and I'm thrilled to announce that Sarah Gadden will be one of the hosts of this year's Giller Prize Gala. Yay. Continuing with Sarah's literary connections, um, it was recently announced that Sarah will direct the feature film adaptation of Heather O'Neill's Lullabies for Little Criminals, which as an aside, uh, was the winner of the 2007 Canada Reads. See how it all nicely comes together? Sarah will share hosting duties this year with another incredible talent, New York Times best-selling poet, photographer, author, illustrator, activist, whew, Rupi Kaur. We're so lucky to have Rupi back again with us this year. Rupi has connected with readers around the world through her social media, her intimate performance, and her poetry collections, which have sold over 10 million copies and have been translated into over 42 languages. Her latest book, Healing Through Words, is available as of today. Nice. We're honored to have such a talented duo to host this year. In their capable hands, we look forward to sharing the celebration of our Canadian literary talent with audiences across the country. Okay, now the plug. Okay, please remember, mark this date, Monday, November 7th, and you can find it pretty much everywhere on the CBC. CBC TV, CBC Gem, CBC Radio 1, cbcbooks.ca, a lot of CBC there, um, where we will uh, have the grand reveal of the Scotiabank Giller Prize winner. Okay, now I'm going to get out of the way, and I'm going to hand it back to Jill, and she's going to do the big announcement. <laughs> I'm still not doing the big announcement, guys. <laughs> it's still not me. Um, I am going to invite the people who are going to do the big announcement onto the stage. We have four seats here for our jury members to join us on stage. And while they get uh, into position, it is actually time to prepare for the 2022 Scotiabank Giller Prize shortlist. That moment has come. Uh, to announce the first finalist, please welcome Jury Chair Casey Plett. Thank you, JL. You're all ready? <laughs> the first shortlisted author 
is Kim Fu for her short story collection, Lesser Known Monsters of the 21st Century, published by Coach House Books. The Scotiabank and Giller Prize jury writes, an endlessly surprising story collection without a single flawed entry in the bunch, Kim Fu's lesser known monsters of the 21st century is brilliantly textured. Moving from an argument with the operator of a VR machine, to an insomniac's encounter with a veritable sandman, to a couple who can die and resurrect themselves at will, Fu's worlds are fantastical and enterprising in their own right, but these setups stealthily reveal themselves to be structures for unspeakably moving revelations about the most real of human experiences, grief, anger, mistrust, sex, nostalgia, sacrifice, a deeply emotional collection that delights, dares, and dazzles. This is like my favorite thing. I love this so much. And I love it way better when I don't have a book out the same year. <laughs> a big thank you to jury chair Casey to announce the next finalist. Please welcome Kai Kello. The next finalist is Rawihaj Stray Dogs. The short stories in Rawi Haj's Stray Dogs fuse spare, graceful language with world-spanning design. Haunted by war and movement, families fragment and cultures stretch. As the characters cross borders in pursuit of careers and relationships, they are pulled back through fissures in memory. We follow academics and photographers to Montreal, Berlin, and Tokyo, and yet those geographical distances can appear less vast than the cultural distance between a childhood in rural Lebanon and a privileged adulthood in Beirut. Just as travel is grounded by return, accomplishment is undercut by uncertainty, and urbane arrogance often rests on a foundation of humble circumstances. Movement is met with recurring meditations on the static images of photography. The writing is streamlined and confident, understated and wry. As the stories develop, we are confronted by their surprising, lifelike inevitability. Thank you, Kai. I just get so excited with each one. Okay, <laughs> to introduce our next two shortlisted authors, please welcome Wabgishad Rice. Bonjour, Menogajev. Hello, good morning. The next shortlisted title is We Measure the Earth with Our Bodies by Tsiring Lansom Lama. <laughs> Through a stirring intergenerational saga that spans decades and continents, Tsiring Yangsom Lama deftly unearths how exiles create home when their homelands have been stolen. With tender authenticity, we measure the earth with our bodies, delicately and vigorously illustrates the ongoing human cost of Tibetan displacement and the resolve of refugees to uphold the strong diaspora despite the violence of colonialism. The Tibetan women at the center of Lama's story are bound by an unflinching love for each other, their people, and the country to which they can no longer return. Vast in time, space, and feeling, this determined novel builds a vibrant world that's both expansive and exact. Each line carefully bears the weight of longing for what once was and the hope to sustain an uprooted culture still coming to be. Regenerative in spirit, the pages of the story are both an homage to survival and a home for the exiled. I get to do two, double duty. Our next shortlisted title is The Sleeping Car Porter by Suzette Mayer. Suzette Mayer brings to life, believably, achingly, thrillingly, a whole world contained in a passenger train moving across the Canadian vastness nearly 100 years ago. As only occurs in the finest historical novels, 
Every page in The Sleeping Car Porter feels alive and immediate, and eerily contemporary. The Sleeping Car Porter in this sleek, stylish novel is named R.T. Baxter, called George by the people upon whom he waits, as is every other black porter. Baxter's dream of one day going to school to learn dentistry coexists with his secret life as a gay man. And in Mayer's triumphant novel, we follow him not only from Montreal to Calgary, but into and out of the lives of an indelibly etched cast of supporting characters. And finally, into a beautifully rendered radiance. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. I don't know how you scored double duty, but you did a great job. Um, to announce the fifth and final entry on your to be read pile, AKA the Giller Prize shortlist, please welcome Katie Kitimura. The final shortlisted title is If an Egyptian Cannot Speak English by Noor Naga. A work of startling emotional depth and intellectual rigor, Noor Naga's If an Egyptian Cannot Speak English probes the ethics of identity, desire, privilege, and storytelling. Set in Cairo in the wake of the Arab Spring, the novel tracks the relationship between a troubled Egyptian photographer and an Egyptian-American woman recently arrived in the city. It is at once a love story, a disquisition on politics, an exploration of trauma, and a deft work of metafiction, a slim novel that at times seems almost infinitely capacious. Naga is a bold writer, unafraid of complexity and complication. She is also a magician with language. Every sentence in this exhilarating novel astonishes and provokes. In the end, the relationship Naga probes most urgently is our relationship with language, its power to coerce and control, and its power to liberate. Thank you. I still feel very excited, even though there's no more coming. I feel like this anticipation of uh, buying all these books and having them on my bookshelf. Um, so there you have it, our 2022 Scotiabank Giller Prize shortlist. Please join me once again in congratulating all our wonderful and talented authors. It's such an exciting moment when all those titles come up together on the screen. So when you see them on social media today, share it. There's some people who aren't paying attention right now, and I don't know why, but they will. So share those graphics. Um, the jury had to select those five titles from a collection of 138 titles. But the really hard part starts uh, as they narrow it down to just one, which we'll, they'll do on the day of the Giller Prize announcement. Um, so please give a round of applause for our jury. Give them also your best wishes <laughs> as you give them that applause. Thank you. Before the winner is announced, uh, book, book lovers can join in conversation across the country and get to know our finalists at our 10th annual Between the Pages beginning October 12th. Details and tickets are available at scotiabankgillerprize.ca. The, Sco the 2022 Scotiabank Giller Prize winner will be re revealed live on Monday, November 7th on CBC TV, CBC Radio 1, and live streamed at cbcbooks.ca. There is so many ways to watch and enjoy. It will be hosted by exceptional poet and fellow Bramptonian Rupi Kaur and award-winning actress Sarah Gadden. It's going to be a really special night. I'm very excited. I hope I get an invite. Um, and I hope you watch. I hope you listen. I hope you stream. But most importantly, as an author, as a book lover, read the books. I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And happy reading, Canada.